So the destigmatization work has begun more than 30 years ago, right? And of course, around the circle, 30 years later in our celebration today. So of course, we will still need to focus on the destigmatization of our mental health issue, right? So thank you, Brother Singh B, for such an inspiring uh, journey back to the good old days. I was from the batch three that was attending as a participant, 1993. So I was batch three, 1993. And years later, I became one of the coordinator. And uh, definitely, yeah, it has been a great journey this more than 30 years ago. And it's so uh, exciting yeah, to be here today for this forum. So, but today, yeah, we're going to have our second speaker, Dr. So. So he's going to stress more yeah, on the importance of destigmatization of mental health challenges. Yeah? So the, from an expert perspective now, so I'll pass over to Dr. So. Yeah, to give us the professional perspective of destigmatization of mental health challenges. Over to you. Okay, okay thank you, uh, Sister Mian. Okay, um, I'm really honored to be invited uh, to this forum uh, to talk about um, how, um, what is actually stigma, and then what happened with stigma, and then how we're we actually going to overcome stigma when it comes to the mental health perspective. Huh? Okay, so before that, maybe I can ask uh, uh, the audience, uh, whether is it uh, here with us or those who are over the Facebook, do you know what abilities that you own? Are you aware of your own abilities? Yes, some of you know that, yeah. And then can you cope with the stresses? Do you think that you can cope with your stress? Yes, all right. And then are you able to work productively? Yes, I can hear some yeses or so. That's good. And are you contributing to the community? Yes. Oh, even louder. Yes. All right. That's great. Okay. So why am I asking this? This is because you are having actually a good mental health. So you know the definition of mental health. Well, we always use this word mental health, mental health. What does it mean? All right. So actually, WHO, the World Health Organization, have defined mental health as it's a state of mental well-being which uh, the individual realizes his or her own abilities and then the, the person can actually cope with the normal stresses of life and also can work productively and fruitfully and also finally able to make contribution to his or her community. So people who are able to do this, you are having a good mental health. All right. So because we, we often say that, but what does it mean? You know, sometimes, uh, I mean, am I having, sometimes we even question ourselves, am I actually in a good healthy state in terms of mentally, all right? So at least this clears, clears up some of your doubts, all right? So of course, uh, when we talk about health, we talk about disease, okay? So when, what is actually a mental disorder? So a mental disorder is actually a clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotional regulation or behavior. So it can come in the form of uh, dysregulations or disturbance disturbances in your cognition, means your thinking process, your emotion, you know, your feelings, and also your behavior. What are you doing? All right. So, and then usually all these disturbances will accompany by the distresses that you felt or impairment in important areas of functioning. What do you mean by important areas of functioning? So usually we look at, um, for example, your, if you are working, we look at your occupational functioning. So does those disturbance in your thinking process, your feelings, or your behavior causing problem in your work performance? If you are students, then it become your academic performances. So you are, are you, is your results actually getting worse? And is it actually you are struggling to actually focus in class and that kind of things? And then of course, besides this kind of functioning, we also talk about interpersonal functioning. That means social functioning. What happened between you and other people? So sometimes the people actually have those disturbances, they still can work, but they quarrel with people. They affect their prob the, the interpersonal relationship. So those also form into the one of the criteria to talk about when we're actually looking at whether this person is ill or not. So the persons must have dis enough is disturbances to the thinking process, feelings or behavior, and also affecting themselves causing distress or others or their work uh, or their works or ac academic performances. So this is what we call mental disorder. All right. 
So because a lot of people are thinking, you know, there are something that is fall under normal. We, we feel happy, we feel sad, but when is it called a depression? You know, ah, so actually we follow through the same way in these definitions. So the cutoff is actually have to fulfill all these things. All right, okay. So this is actually just some factual um, fact, some key facts uh, published by the WHO. Actually, you can find it on the WHO website itself. So they re they say is that you know in the research of 2019, uh, they actually found that one in every eight people are actually affected by a mental disorder. Is that very common? And of course, um, that anxiety and depressions are the commonest, commonest mental disorders. All right. And okay, so and they are uh, they realized that during the pandemic time, of course, this is quite logical that um, they they will actually increase in the people who are suffering from anxiety and depression, depressive disorders. So and then um, so, but we also must know effective prevention and treatments are available to treat also or to prevent mental disorder. So these are actually very these are actually need to be educated to people. So that we understand, all right. So um, it, it's not like it's not untreatable. It's not like a myth or no no treatment at all. Or people who are suffering from mental illness will forever be ill, will forever be uh, yeah, handicapped or disabled. You know, no. Actually, effective treatments are available. All right. So most people with the uh, mental disorders actually um, do not have access to effective care. You know, so especially sometimes uh, people are from rural areas or they don't know where to seek help. So that is why this forum is put up to actually, uh, to actually kind of like give some uh, perspective and some uh, 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 educations to people, some in to increase awareness of it. All right, and many people also experience stigma, discriminations, and violation of human rights when it comes to the mental disorder perspective. Uh, all right. So okay, so here I actually put up some slides of a brief history of psychiatry in order for us to understand why stigma came up and uh, with regards to mental disorder or mental health issue okay so of course in the ancient times we always say you know we, we always say that um, our intellects and emotions are in the heart you know in 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 terms of like in, even in from your literatures from your different even like diff, from different cultures we always say follow your heart but you are actually talking about follow your own emotion your feelings you know um, so we always talk, say that it's in the heart, um, but actually later we really learn that it's, you know, it's actually in the brain, you know, if, when the science developed. Um, in the classical Greek medicines, they actually conceptualize the uh, mental and physical well-being and dysfunctions as a beam that the bad is actually uh, talking, they are talking about the balance between the humors, uh, black bile, yellow bile, blood and flame, these kind of terms they used to use. Uh. Some of them actually like the black bile they're talking about is actually the term they use is actually melancholia. And melancholia now that is we're actually still using in terms of depressions. We are talking about the depression. All right. So those were the understandings. However, in the late uh, 90s uh, and early 20th centuries, and then, um, you know, the physical, Ill the physical diseases, uh, the, the medicine started to develop. So they identify, oh, people get cold or flu because of uh, infections, you know. They realize something is there. Last time we thought there's not, there's not there, you know. We can't see the virus. We don't know that bacteria existed. But later on, they realized that, yeah, we actually finally found why are we getting sick? Why are we getting infection? So now, same thing happens to psychiatry, mental disorders. We want to find out what happened, why we get uh, mental illness, all right? So, and then after that, um, uh, in the, you know, even by that time, uh, people actually don't understand, you know, in 1930s, uh, people, some people even actually promoted they should sterilize people with mental illness. You see how bad the stigma was back then, all right? So, or uh, those with uh, uh, mentally uh, disability, Okay, or mentally uh, mental disorders or chronic mental disorders. Okay, and then they are they were also misuses of psychiatry such as maybe they labeling people as a schizophrenic, uh, uh, based on uh, particular uh, political grounds. Uh, people are trying to use that to to uh, to label or to actually to uh, to actually bring down certain people, you know, by using this kind of thing. So the stigma was already formed back then. All right, and then after that. 
Later part, when you come across, there are some physicians finally started to explore about the mind. So I think some of you who are actually involved in mental health, uh, 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 they actually we heard this name very often, Sigmund Freud. We, he started off with the theories of psychoanalysis, where they started to focus on what happens to our mind. Something quite abstract, you know, mind, you know, uh, we are not talking about the physical yet, but he finally explored how our minds work, and he come up with theories about that. And then follows from him, then there are more theories about our development of the mind started to actually uh, develop, mm? the, the theories started to actually uh, being produced by many scholars, okay? And then in later part, in the mid 19th centuries, you can, uh, then you realize that, you know, those who are, who are mentally ill, well, they, are, they actually just confine them to a, a building to just provide shelter, simple food, you know, some, some basic needs. They call that humane treatment right? because there's no way to treat uh, mental illness back then. So they just keep them so-called safe or and all those places, also trying to protect the rest of the people they think so from the rest of people from them. So they put them under the asylums. They call that asylums that back then. All right. And then after that, they just put in them in, and then after that, uh, but you know, you know the, uh, when by putting them in, we actually segregate them from us. That actually increases the stigma, actually. We are more scared of the people who have mental illness, all right? So of course, there are also some wrongful detentions, and then some journalists, they actually went in and found that the condition, the people who are mentally ill are being abused and so on under the asylums, they actually even promotes the, the, the scare and the, and the fear towards asylum and also towards the mentally, uh, mentally ill patients. Huh? Okay, so the turn of events started when in the 50s, 1950s. You know, that's why you, you see uh, it's just 70 years ago, not far from now actually if, in, if you look at it. You know, um, that, that's when the medications first started to be found to be useful in treating certain mental illness. All right. For example, in 1951, chlorpromazine used, used to be an anesthetic agent for, to put people for surgery and so on, found to be actually actively able, uh, able to treat uh, schizophrenia, psychosis. Okay? And then after that, in the, follow, the, the, in the uh, few years follows, antidepressants started to be found. Okay? So that is when finally psychiatry is uh, mental, mental health becoming also can be included in one of the med medical field. You know, they started to understand, actually, there are something that we can use, also we can treat to modify certain system in our body to, uh, to actually uh, treat these disorders. But of course, again, this is not just uh, one, this is just one side of the story. So to look into the mental health perspective, we, it's actually much more complex than just medications and just, uh, just uh, things, neurotransmitters and so on. Later, I'm going to explain on that. All right. So after the found the, the, the they found out about the medication, they then the 1960s onwards, this is de, we call that deinstitutionalization occurred. We want to move the people out from the asylum. We don't want to keep them there anymore. All right. So there is when after that the development of neurosciences, behavioral sciences, psychotherapies, and then uh, the also develop on the standardization of those diagnostic criteria, treatment options uh, based on scientific findings started to develop. Uh, a lot. So that is when the psychiatry and also psychological medicine actually started to act, uh, becoming more and more uh, underst uh, underst uh, 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 people actually able to understand them better lah, based on scientific findings as well. All right. Okay. So this is actually just a brief un uh, brief history. Okay. Next, we go on to what is stigma. You know, if you can find in the different, different dictionaries, they talk about mark of disgrace, they talk about strong feelings of disapproval. So, and some scholars are literature are from uh, the psychiatry or psychological uh, perspective, we, call, we, we say when we say stigma, we mean that a mark, the condition or status that is subject to devaluations. So we trying to, when they, we talk about certain sign, we are trying to mark them down, all right? So this is stigma, okay? So this is a, Howard Phillips is actually a, uh, uh, an American writer. He wrote uh, fictions and so on. So he actually once quoted, um, the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. So back then we have no ideas um, 
we are, don't understand, we don't quite understand about psychiatry or mental illness or mental health. So that's why people are fearful about that, fearful about the, uh, about the things they don't know. All right? Even you look at all the movies and so on, they also talk about the same thing. Huh? They, they, may have, they say that we are fear of the ghosts, we fear of, even you look at like X-Men, you know, they, they talk about, you know, the, the people fear of mutants because of them. They are all basic, base, basically using the same theme. All right? Okay, so here, why we actually stigmatize people? Because we, I say just now, mental illness, the, cause, the causes of mental illness is not that straightforward. You know, it's not just, um, okay, you, 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 uh, you got this and then therefore you will definitely confirm getting mental illness. It's not that straightforward. It's quite complex. And we use this model to understand it. So we talk about biological factors, we talk about psychological factors, and we talk about the environment, the social factors. Okay, so of course, biological uh, factors, including that we understand, uh, we actually can, by educating people, actually mental illness is just like you having flu, you know? Uh, it's just like you, you, you can't control, you get flu, you get in runny nose. So same people who are actually feeling depressed and so on, you cannot say, you don't think about it, you don't, you just, you, uh, you, 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 it's because you think negatively, you know? Uh, but depressed people will think like that. All right, so, so it's, it's actually how we are going, we are going to actually, we, we, we can't we, we can actually tell people, uh, uh, you, you, you are having flu, please stop your runny nose. We can't say that. So same thing, you people who are having depressions, they can't sleep well, they cannot have the motivation, they don't have the energy, you cannot say, no, you should do it, you, 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 you just do it. You know, yeah, I know initially sometimes we also advise people try their best to do, but the symptoms is part of the symptoms. You can't just ask them to stop having the symptoms just miraculously like that, all right? So by understanding the biological aspect also can help us to reduce the stigma. And we're also looking into genetic risk. But of course, the genetic risk here is actually not like your thalassemia. You have a thalassemia in your parents and then you, the, ch the children will also get it very direct. Here, increases the risk. So let's say uh, parent, uh, parents or siblings having mental illness can increase the risk okay but that doesn't mean it's confirmed that you will get it so that's why i say it's very complex and then you look into the neurotransmitter dysfunction that's when why medication works because they actually alter the neuro neurotransmitters uh functioning all right in the brain and hence helping the patients to recover and then you look into the also the pathological changes of the brain all right actually we get more and more new development of new technologies new scans and eh? we can actually understand Actually, there are changes in the brain. You know, last time when I was younger, when I was in primary school, I read about uh, articles saying that people stigmatize seizure patients, people with epilepsy. You know, back then, do you, I, and I realized that nowadays, hardly people stigmatize them because they realize that, oh, epilepsy is because the electrical charges of the brain is having issue. So they understand, oh, now you found the medical reason for that, then they're less stigmatizing them. So same thing, but in mental illness, we're also actually moving towards that, okay? So of course, we look into also psychological, and you see, uh, where the, the, like, let's, let's say about genetic risk, they're all coming from the same parents. Why certain, um, certain uh, children get it, certain children not getting it, okay? So we look into the person's uh, pers temperament, personality, how they cope, what is their resilience, you know? That's why I think those who are going and un underwent those uh, um, co counseling courses, and they actually improve their also their resilience, their understanding about themselves psychologically, and also improve their co coping skills. Therefore, it actually prevents or reduces your risk, okay? And also, we can also look into the defense mechanisms of the person, okay? Then next, we look into the environment, okay? So the support system, the upbringing of the person, the parenting styles, and also how they interact with others. So this also can have impact on the person's mental health, okay? So there are other efforts that can be used uh, to tackle stigma of mental illness. We talk about renaming of diseases. You might find it sound funny, you know, but it works, huh? it works. Okay, I can give you one very striking example. Do you know that last time, it is a proper medical term to call somebody idiot. It's a diagnosis, huh? Yeah, idiot is a profound mental, uh, intellectual disability, disabled, dis disorder, uh, disability. However, people keep using, they stigmatize, that's why we call that. Uh, they keep using it to scold people. So they change the name. No more idiot, moron, imbecile. We change to more moderate, severe mental retardation. 
But people started to call people retarded. You are retarded, you know? So they changed again. They changed to intellectual disability. But they realized, no, now these people say they are disabled. <laughs> okay, so finally, actually, the latest terms uh, is... Uh, the latest term they now just changed recently. The, uh, uh, the, in the past, based on the WHO classification and also the American Psychiatric Association classification, they actually put that as intellectual developmental disorder. <laughs> they changed it into a way. All right. So same thing with schizophrenia also. You know, some people use that. Uh, in Japan, they actually changed the name. I realized that in some of the media by the Taiwan, uh, they also changed the name of uh, schizophrenia in terms of the Chinese name, the Mandarin name of it. They changed it already so that to talk about, uh, rather than saying that it's a split of your mind, you know, it's very stigmatizing, then they change it to actually it's a disorder of cognitions and perception. Huh. Then you see how they change the name of it, lets you understand the disease better. Okay, so of course, public awareness and education is one of the steps. Like that, this forum itself is very good to educate people to aware, be aware of mental health uh, issues, so that we can actually uh, reduce the stigma. I mean, actually, every year we actually celebrate World Mental Health Day uh, on the 10th of October. Uh, I just put up the the one that we we did it with UPM, uh, but of course, all other hospitals are actually actively doing it every year, uh, 10th of October. And then uh, this year, the theme is actually called Make, make uh, Mental Health and Wellbeing uh, for uh, for All a Global Priority Priority. So we also celebrate World Man Suicide Prevention Day on the 10th of September, a month before the uh, World Mental Health Day. So for, the, for the, these three years, we're actually trying to do what the theme is actually called Creating Hope Through Action, so that all these things are to improve awareness. Okay, so we actually do talks on various m social, uh, media, you know, workshops and organizations. All right, to in, uh, also we actually go into school sometimes. Uh, back in Sabah, I even go to give talks in school so that we start to educate people from the younger generations so that they can understand mental, uh, mental illness better. All right, next is about legislation. We can actually improve the, uh, reduce the stigma from law, through the through law. Okay, Mental Health Act, in, we have actually Mental Health Act started to come in effect in the 2010. You know, this act actually talks about the admission, discharge, care of patients, and quality of uh, mental health facilities and services. But we also actually trying to promote people to understand uh, the, the, the mental health care, uh, the importance of mental health care. And you know that if you actually have a mentally ill family and you are not actually taking care of them, you neglect them, you are actually can be sued uh, based on this law. All right. Of course, the final few things is about decriminalization of um, suicide. It's actually an effort. It's still ongoing. Um, but of course, now the, the we are, I think the last one, uh, in the, uh, this is the news, I think, taken in June, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. September. September or so, right? They are still actually talking about, uh, they are still actually, uh, if not mistaken, it's under AG uh, review now at the moment. So because we have this section 309 under penal code that if you do a suicidal attempt, is an offense. So it will scare people from seeking help. Uh, so we are trying to do that to improve the help-seeking behavior from those who are suffering from depression. And of course, the last, uh, my, this is my last part. Uh, we have, uh, men, we call that a mentari, you know, uh, it's actually an initiative by the Ministry of uh, Health, um, where they provide, uh, this is uh, actually a community health, mental health center in Malaysia. They brand it as a mentari. Uh, it's just like business, you need to actually promote something, you need to brand it. Okay, it's actually, they have provide consultation, rehabilitation, supported employment, they lies with the community, that means that so, uh, like Putrajaya one, they have it, it with uh, uh, apartments of the people. It's just at the ground floor of apartments, you know. This uh, Selayang one is in a more opposite hospital Selayang, something like that. So to reduce the stigma so that people will come, all right? They actually put that as intellectual developmental disorder. 
they change it into a way. All right. So same thing with schizophrenia also. You know, some people use that uh, in Japan. They actually change the name. I realized that in some of the media by the Taiwan, uh, they also change the name of uh, schizophrenia in terms of the Chinese name, the Mandarin name of it. They change it already so that to talk about. Uh, Rather than saying that it's a split of your mind, you know, it's very stigmatizing, then they change it to actually it's a disorder of cognitions and perception. Ha. Then you see how they change the name of it, lets you understand the disease better. Okay? So of course 